Hey, what's going on there, folks? It's the Guitar Historian here with you today. Welcome to another episode of GH Reacts. As you can no doubt tell from the thumbnail and uh, the title of the video, my thoughts today are going to be centered around the new Fender Player Plus line and uh, just my, my general thoughts on where pricing of guitars is going in the future. You know, I guess I'm at the age now where I can remember when things were cheap, or at least cheap from a, you know, from a sense of perspective, you know. Um, and, you know, nowadays you're just looking at these prices and they just seem to be going up and up and up. And, you know, I do kind of give the guitar makers credit to some extent because they have been incorporating some premium things into the guitars. So if you haven't heard, I'll, I'll kind of just really quickly reiterate. Um, this is a Fender Player Strat. This is upgraded already. I actually wanted to show this off. I actually put a pre-wired pickguard in this last night with the Fender Noiseless, which is what the Player Plus comes with. So that's why I thought it was uh, kind of appropriate to show it off to you guys tonight. I also upgraded it with locking tuners and a couple of little accoutrements, but uh, for the most part, this is the player strat. It's made in Mexico, and uh, these run $6.99 new off of Sweetwater without any discounts or anything of that nature or any sales, um, and there's going to be a tip towards the end of this video that will help you save money. It doesn't always work, but it does work a lot of the times. But these days, it seems to have been working less and less. But you should still try it. But just stay tuned for that. But anyway, the Player Plus series, um, they uh, are running about a 1000 bucks. So the cheapest Player Plus that they sell, which is just the Strat with noiseless pickups, is, um, is $1,000. And then there's a couple other versions of it. There's one that has a wide range pickup in it. And uh, basically, it's an HSS with a wide range pickup. They run not much more, like 1029 or 1049 or something like that. Uh, so the whole line, I think, runs between $1,000 and $1,100. Mind you, these are not United States made instruments, okay? So as we have seen over the last year or so, um, guitar prices have been going up. I've made a couple of videos about it in the past. I made a video about the, the Slash Epiphone line that they just put out, which all of those run $800, and they don't even come with Gibson pickups. But in the past, you could get Epiphone Les Pauls with Gibson pickups for about $800. But now, they've just kind of pulled the rug out of that, and they're just putting out Epiphones without, and just putting the regular Epiphone pickups in there. Now, again, the guitar makers have been doing a good job generally of quality and trying to put certain things into the guitars that are, you know, good and well-made and, and upgraded parts, you know. So this guitar, I got this for cheap, and I'll tell you about my, my tip. Um, I got this middle of the pandemic, probably, I want to say late summer of last year is when I ordered it. And what happened was I originally ordered a regular three pickup Strat, but they'd sold it on the floor and then uh, it got lost in the shuffle somehow. And they basically had sold my guitar. And I guess the person who was running the reverb stuff and the, or people who were running the, you know, actual stuff that they have on the floor, they didn't really communicate and it ended up getting sold. They were really nice about it. They threw in a lot of stuff. I ended up getting... I don't know if you can see it, but there's a Fender Tweed case over there that I got for, like, hardly anything. And um, and I got the guitar, and after all was said and done, I probably paid them about $600 for the guitar and the case all totaled. All totaled. Um, now, the pre-wired pick guards generally run about $300. I found it on Amazon for really cheap. I got it for, like, $220. So... Uh, at the end of the day, this guitar probably ended up costing me about seven fifty as it sits right now, maybe maybe eight hundred with the locking tuners. Uh, so it's still cheaper than the Player Plus, but 
I can understand if you're going to buy a player strat and then put better stuff in it, you're basically spending that much anyway. So it's almost like pre-modded <laughs> if you don't want to mod it. They're nice guitars. I'm sure they're nice guitars. They have a different radius. They have a rolled edges. That's like their new thing now, um, which some people like or dislike. I don't know. It's up to you. It's kind of a new thing. So I'm sure a lot of a lot of you old timers out there will probably think that it's, you know, stupid or whatever. But at any rate, um, they're a thousand dollars for Mexican made guitars. So my thoughts on, on this and, and also, you know, the Chinese made guitars from Epiphone are coming in almost at a thousand dollars too. And now, so of course, commensurately, the American made instruments have to go up in price as well. So, you know, whereas a Gibson Les Paul standard, I think when I first started playing guitar, in the late 90s, early 2000s, was probably like $1,500. Now it's $2,500. So we basically added $1,000 in 20 years. I guess that sounds about right from the standpoint of how inflation has been going and how, especially right now, with um, a lot of prices just being high on everything, you know, everything is just, just costs so much and the cost of living doesn't really mean, mean jack anymore. Um, so I guess, you know, in the scheme of things, it partially makes sense, but I mean, I, I just want to know what you guys think about it. It's, it's kind of getting out of control to me for these instruments that are made overseas that are supposed to be affordable and are supposed to be approachable for people to get into playing guitar. And now the only thing that's going to be really left to them are, you know, Squires, which obviously I think Squires are great guitars too, but they're not Fenders and they're not obviously American made Fenders. Would you pay $1,000 for a Mexican-made Fender? Is basically the, the bottom line question that you have to ask yourself in this situation. And uh, it's, it's kind of a tough question for me. I'm not really sure I would. When I paid, you know, when I saw this was, this was $699, I was like, there's no way I'm paying $699. There's no way. I'll find a way to pay less. And here's, here was the tip, okay? This was back when several sellers were doing this because I know, because I was watching things on Reverb a bunch when I was in the market for this, and um, this is how it works. So if you go on Reverb.com, a lot of these private sellers, not private sellers, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the like small shops, the local shops, but big shops, even shops like Chicago Music Exchange, and, you know, they're not like Sweetwater Huge, but they're big, you know, online retailers that are known to sell guitars. So if you put guitars into your watch list. Let's say you're looking for the new uh, Noventa Telecaster, right? I think that runs a grand. So what a lot of sellers will do is they'll send you an offer if they want to get rid of that, that particular guitar. Now, right now, it's not happening as much as it used to be because I'm still putting stuff in my watch list just to see what will happen. And it hasn't been happening as often, but it still does happen on certain things. And sometimes you'll get an offer from certain sellers for 15% off, and then you can make a counter offer for whatever you want. So, for instance, in my case, I think they had $6.99. I think they offered me, uh, it ended up being, you know, whatever 20% or 15% off was, it ended up being like $5.90 or something like that. And I, I offered $5.75, and they took that offer. So, you know, you don't want to like, rape them they have to make money still but you you do want to um you know make a counter offer because it's just what you do and uh that's a good way to save money i mean right there i saved 125 bucks and a lot of people will just go on to sweetwater and just pay whatever it says on there and i'm not knocking sweetwater they're a good company but you know they, they don't really do that. I think people will say, well, if you call them up, sometimes they'll give you a deal. Yeah, but I mean, the whole point of online shopping is you don't have to talk to a human being. That's what people do it for, right? I mean, if not, you would, you would go to a store. <laughs> but at any rate, um, that's the tip. So just what I would say is make it very targeted, though. If you want, like, that new player plus strat that comes in the faded blue that's really cool looking, um, watch as many of those as you can find. Just search for that particular guitar from a bunch of different sellers and just put them all on your watch list. So you have like 20 of them in there. I'm not even lying, right? And then what will happen is at least a few of those sellers are going to sell, send you an offer for that guitar. And maybe it'll be for 825 or something like that or 850 
And if you're willing to pay a thousand bucks for it, you're certainly going to be willing to pay eight fifty for it. So there you go. You know, so that's kind of how it works. If you've never used the watch list on Reverb, it's really easy. You just find something you like and you push the star button, and boom, it's in your watch list. So that's all you got to do. Um, and then if you get an offer, usually the app will give you a notification that someone sent you an offer. You go look at it. You either accept it, or you don't. You make a counter offer, and you move on. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, as far as this one's concerned, I just want to know the community's feelings about where guitar prices have been going lately and just kind of what we've been, what we're willing to pay. You know, what are we willing to pay as guitar players for these instruments that are not made in America anymore? And now they're, you know, they've, Fender has done it. They've, they've hit the $1,000 mark, you know, and uh, that's probably the first guitar that I've seen other than maybe like the Joe Bonamassas, which obviously come with a lot of very high-end stuff the Epiphone Joe Bonamass, but even if those I think started at $800 so I think this may be the first time that a non-American instrument has retailed at $1,000 so tell me your thoughts, what do you think? where do we go from here? what are we doing? you know, do we as the buying public say no and make these guitar makers come down in price or do we think that it's worth it you know and do we think that the price increases are just part of you know inflation and business being business the way it is these days let me know so thanks for watching we'll see you next time